In this video, you will see the results of three test procedures conducted at Connectrix Lab on November 19, 2008. The testing was done to replicate failures and faults that are typical to the utility industry and to quantify and qualify a blanket protection system in compliance with OSHA 29 CFR Part 1910-269-T7 for manhole protection. Representatives from Detroit Edison supplied and prepared cable to help create conditions that would appear in a network environment. The last segment of this video is dedicated to other applications of the blast mat in the industry. Before discussing the test results, we need to address the units used to evaluate the blankets. When testing FR materials used in clothing, a single spherical arc is generated which is both uniform and reproducible. The clothing test does not, however, approach the energy levels found in underground vaults where amperages may reach 50,000 amps with voltages as high as 10,000 to 15,000 volts. Additionally, there is often directionality to the arc which concentrates the energy versus the spherical test method. Because of the significantly increased level of energy, the sensors used to measure cal per centimeter squared will fail before they can register, creating the need for another unit of measure, the Ka cycle. The ability of an arc suppression blanket to provide adequate protection depends on two critical factors, the maximum amperage in the circuit and the maximum clearing time. Knowing these two items allows the calculation of a number which can be compared to each blanket's ability to absorb and or direct that amount of energy. Amperage is measured in Ka, or the number of amps divided by a thousand. Clearing time is measured in cycles. One cycle is one sixtieth of a second, during which electric current will continue before a fuse or circuit breaker shuts the current off. The resulting unit of measurement, the Ka cycle, is determined by multiplying the maximum amperage in Ka by the clearing time in cycles. As an example, if an underground system carries 25,000 amps and has a clearing time of 5 cycles, the number would be 25,000 divided by 1,000 times 5, equaling 125 Ka cycles. In our light line series, you see the blanket is two-toned and in the standard 7-layer blanket, they are the same. For proper installation, the worker should always be able to read the label. Configuration of testing was done in an above ground vault at the Connectrix Lab in Toronto which is depicted below. The blankets were secured to a stanchion system designed by Progress Energy. The stanchion system is used to hold the blankets in place during testing as well as having potential use in the field. The same system is used in creating the proposed ASTM standard. With the weave method, you drape the blanket in and out of the circuits to cover up the ones you are not working on. With the testing that has been conducted, this is a far superior method to wrapping. The idea is to channel the energy, never challenge it. Here are two of the many tests that illustrate the weave method. In the preceding videos, you can clearly see the effects of an arc blast on the blanket. Test number one. The video begins with a light created by the fault and through the first cycle of the arc, you see evidence of the pressure wave exerting its influence on the blanket. Note the sides are beginning to be drawn inward toward the fault. Through the next cycle, the plasma arc and radiant heat energy push the blanket outward as its energy searches for an escape. Test 2. This video has been slowed down dramatically. This demonstrates how the blanket is capable of managing the intensity of an arc. The pulsating and release out the sides shows the blanket's management of the forces present. Had this been an enclosed vault, the blanket would have directed everything towards the manhole opening. The layering and quilting of the fabrics have a significant impact on how the arc blanket will perform. Through testing of multiple fabrics, we found that if the fabric retained too much heat, the blanket would ignite. With our system, the material is designed to ablate or peel away to help diffuse the heat and energy without breaking through all the layers in the blanket. In this test, the blanket was wrapped tightly around the live circuit with three Kevlar straps. Note. The addition of the copper cable which was used because the cable was not a complete concentric neutral. This method helped guarantee a fault. Test 3. We see that the fault was able to rip through 14 layers of the blanket in less than a half cycle. 
With adjustments to the wrap and size of the blanket, you may be able to increase the blanket's ability to manage the fall. Recommendations Use the largest arc expression blanket. Use at least half the number of attachment points on a blast mat. Use Kevlar straps on smaller blankets, nylon on larger ones. Where the possibility exists for heavy shrapnel, use the regular blanket. Attach the blanket to a solid support. Lightline blankets are good up to 25 Ka, 250 Ka cycles. Regular blankets, 7 layers, over 25 Ka. This video depicts an art flash incident in front of a cabinet where the employee is racking a breaker. This picture shows how a power plant used the blankets to create a barrier between the breakers and the walkway. Prior to this installment, they would have to close down the whole floor before they could proceed with maintenance work. Colonial Pipeline had a situation in one of their pumping stations where they had employees working in the same room as the electrical equipment and needed to create a barrier system yet still be able to read and operate the dials and switches. In real life, you are not going to hear the sound of the horn before an incident happens, so be prepared. The alternative is not pretty. If you're in a vault, manhole, or other application, the blast mat offers you the protection you need. 